Hey, I'm Brian Van, Sport by and today we're going to do a product review on the all new HJC F70 full face helmet. The all new HJC F70 helmet retails from 242 to 287. Please understand that we don't update videos when pricing changes only if the product itself has been completely redesigned. This is a brand new full face helmet that offers a drop down inner screen from HJC. It also offers a very unique look. You look at the vents on the top, the vents on the back. I mean, this is a pretty badass looking helmet. And even that breath guard that comes installed is kind of oversized. You know, it just gives this thing a really kick-ass aggressive look like i said drop down inner screen this is also one of their new helmets that's designed to accept their smart hjc cena bluetooth device okay before we dive into who this helmet is right for i want to share something i learned i reviewed five hjc helmets all at the same time i wore every one of those at my desk for an extended period of time of all five helmets in that group this one had the most unique fit pattern this helmet runs rather narrow side to side, especially as compared to the other models that I reviewed. So I would rate it as being closer to a long oval. It's not a true long oval fit, but it's closer to long oval than it is intermediate oval. So please use that information when choosing whether you're going to order this or not. This is right for street riders that are looking for a helmet that offers an integrated drop down inner screen also offers the ability to accept a direct integration. We'll have another video on showing what it takes to install it in this helmet. The all new HJC, Smart HJC Cena Bluetooth devices, which is pretty cool. This helmet weighs 3.3 pounds in a size medium on our digital shipping scale. It is both DOT and ECE certified. Let's dive into sizing. I measure 58 centimeters on the money intermediate oval head shape, as I stated previously. I wore this at my desk for a long period of time. It's a size medium. The fit's not bad, the on-off effort's not bad, but it is a little narrow side to side, so much so that the longer I wore it, the more I kind of started to notice it. That could be problematic for those long rides, could create a little bit of a hot spot in that area, which wouldn't be pleasant. Another key note is glasses compatibility. We got a couple of factors working here, okay? One is going to be this large breath guard. You see that thing's up pretty high, okay? So getting the glasses on and off was a little wonky with that. And that could have something to do with the shape and size of the glasses. So that could vary from rider to rider, eyewear to eyewear. But I also felt that the channel where the arms of the glasses slid in was not in the best overall position. The other helmets that I reviewed in this block of HJC helmets all had a better glasses compatibility built in. Let's break down the features and benefits of the F70. Let's begin and try to stay on track with ventilation. Any one of these helmets that offers that kick-ass drop-down inner screen, okay? I'll find the button if I keep looking for it. There's a trade-off with that. They have to start the ventilation much further back and not put any ventilation directly in the brown in order to accommodate that drop-down inner screen going up in between the shell and the EPS. For that reason, these style helmets with a drop-down screen never ventilate as well as just a pure full face that has a vent right here in the brow. This area here is kind of left, it's like no man's land, no ventilation really coming in there. Kind of a hot spot, but at the end of the day, you do pick up the flexibility of not having to travel with a second screen. If you take those long rides that start off dark, end up light, and then finish in the dark, all you have to do is just slide this thing up and down and you're good to go. Intake vent down here in the chin. And boy, I gotta tell you, these vents, look at this. I mean, this is just bitching. They look great. The action feels really cool. This is a badass looking helmet. Intake vents up here on the top, they don't disappoint either. Look at that. Nice, smooth action. They slide forward and back. The diffuser vent here in the back, all those independent pieces. You know, the, the multiple layers and colors, it just really looks super badass. Drop down inner screen, we already talked about that. In the upward position, 
It has a detent to make sure it stays in place. It's cable driven, so you can kind of go partial if you want to. Honestly, I think it's best all the way down or all the way up. Optically correct, clear shield that is scratch resistant, and it is set up to accept the HJC pin lock insert for this specific shield. That gives you true fog-free performance that is sold separately. I already noted previously, this does integrate directly with the new Smart HJC Cena devices. This helmet offers double D-ring retention system. It ships the little extension here that Velcro's on for the chin curtain. I've already installed it. It's simple on, simple off. Just kind of helps calm and quiet the air in this area. Removable cheek pads, removable top pad. Got a little Venturi style exhaust vent down here at the base of the shell. Cool shell details built, up, built into it. Overall, the quality also is very high. They did a nice job on this helmet. Stay tuned. We're going to give you a closer look from the inside out. I'm going to show you how to change the shield, how to remove the interior, and give you a look at the inside once everything is stripped away. The F70 shell is made of their advanced fiberglass materials, Okay, so it's rather lightweight. They use two shell sizes as well as two EPS sizes in construction of the shell. Shield removal. This differs from the rest of the helmets in the range as it is not toolish. You need a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws and the washers that hold it in place. Good looking, nicely machined pieces. From there the shield literally comes right off the helmet. Very simple. You can see it's kind of carved out, ready to accept that pin lock insert if you want to do that. Multiple uh, detents are built into this shield. If you look at the gasket and even the detail they've built into that, I and mean, this just really looks super bitching. To reinstall the shield, it's simple. Just slide it back into position. It'll kind of hold itself there. Right, push in just a little bit and then you're able to get the washers and the screws back in place right, and fasten it down. You want to make sure that you have those torqued properly so that they don't come loose while you're riding, you're ratcheting the shield up and down. And I would also suggest from time to time just put a screwdriver on those and make sure that they have not worked their way loose. From here, I'll show you how to remove the interior of the helmet. <clears throat> the text that initially was in the catalog for this helmet, I did see a note of emergency release cheek pads, but when I look at the helmet itself, I've already disassembled and put this back together. I don't see anything that would indicate that it does have emergency release cheek pads. Double D-ring retention system, padded strap. To remove the cheek pads, slide your fingers in between the backing of the cheek pad and the internal EPS of the helmet, and release the three snaps that are holding it into place. Kind of one at the front, one at the top, one at the back. Once you've done that, grab the cheek pad here, kind of pull out and rotate back like so. There are two clips here and here that are going to hold that into position. Repeat that on the other side. I'd also like to note the fabric they used on this was really comfortable. Felt good against the skin. Now the top pad. You have two snaps here at the back. Release those. Slide your hand underneath the liner. And I want you at the very front of the helmet here in the brow area, kind of grab onto it as close to the plastic channel as possible. You may need to use your thumbnail to help release some of those clips. You don't want to pull on it too hard. I found that these kind of hold it in position rather tightly and that oftentimes I would have to do that in order to get the top channel out. Give you a closer look here at the top pad as well as our cheek pads. Inside the helmet itself, here's where we can show you that integration. They've molded channels and cutouts in here to accept the wiring, the microphone, the speakers from those units installed directly into this helmet. EPS, you can see the EPS is channeled out. Here's the intake holes up here in the front. And what they have done to help mitigate the fact that you know, you're trading off a little bit of ventilation by having the drop down in there is they've extended the channels here in the EPS further down into the brow area and that's going to help encourage some airflow into that area to help improve ventilation in the brow in the absence of the vents that would normally be there. 
can see back here in the rear of the helmet, can you see all those holes that are in there, Caleb? They have five holes in there for the exhaust ventilation that are going to correspond directly with this large <coughs> exhaust vent here in the back of the helmet. Here is the plate where the smart HJC device would install. Overall, what do I think? I think it's cool. My biggest issue with this helmet <coughs> is going to be the fit. It's a little bit more narrow than we typically expect to feel from HJC helmets. That could be a problem for some, while not being a problem for others. I would say at my intermediate oval head shape, I'm kind of right on the fence. You know, I kind of started to notice it after about an hour or so. I don't really know what that would feel like after a three or four hour ride. All in all, I really like the helmet. I like the aggressive looks. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments section of this video. I answer all that stuff myself. And I'm here to help you get a great experience in your next helmet purchase.